Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. Hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed. So today I'm actually going to be reacting to this is what Islam says about dinosaurs. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. So the question always comes, especially for people that believe in creation and things of that sort, what about the dinosaurs that were here before human beings? Do we even believe in dinosaurs? What about the disgusting little creatures and critters? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create them? And what, or what do we have to say about them? First of all, the most beneficial aspect when you're speaking about the creation of the animals is that which relates to us. And what that means is, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, Allah created us as human beings between the angels and the animals. And so you have angels that have absolutely no desire, no will. Their sole purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their sole uh, existence is just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they're free from those desires. And then you have on the other side, the animals, on the, on the far end of the other spectrum, the animals who don't have those, uh, you, know, you know, who don't have reasoning and don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that the angels do. And they're just full of desires, unrestricted desires. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, we find ourselves in between. And what that means is if we incline towards our desires more, our unrestricted desires more, then we become like animals. And if we incline towards worship and reason, then we become like the angels. And in fact, as human beings, we have the potential to be better than the angels, as we'll talk about uh, when we choose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we choose to use our reason and our intellect in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have the potential to be worse than animals because the animals are not held accountable because of the, the, the uh, missing reasoning and things of that sort. And so it's important for us to find ourselves in that spectrum. Where do we fall? Do we fall towards the soul that is at peace, the nafs that is at peace, the nafs al-mutma'inna, or a nafs al-bahima, the animal-like self, which is just territorial uh, desires, intimacy, and food, and drink, and so on and so forth. Now when we talk about the, uh, you know, the chronological order of creation, Islam actually does clearly say that animals were created before human beings. Uh, this is established in authentic hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said that Adam السلام, was the last of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And we'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala uh, going forward. And in that is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided everything, has placed everything at our service. That when we come into existence as human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already created uh, the scene. It's already there. Uh, Allah Azza wa also says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Luqman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَن تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَةٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He created the skies, the heavens without pillars that you see. And He's cast into this earth firmly set mountains so that it keeps it stable. And He spread throughout this earth all types of creatures. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually makes that clear in the Quran as well. Dabba means beasts, means any type of creature that you can imagine. And so we know that before we got to this earth, there were you know, all kinds of dinosaurs, beasts, and that's one of the crimes of the jinn, is that they didn't treat them well, as we spoke about previously. And you had roaches as well, and, and some of those disgusting little critters that existed. Actually, even before the dinosaurs, uh, you know, scientifically they think that roaches existed millions of years before the dinosaurs. And so you ask yourself, why? All right, so if we establish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them there before us and that there's benefit to them, why, you know, why do we have roaches? Why do we have rats? Why do we have all these disgusting little creatures? And, and you know, uh, subhanAllah, when it comes to roaches, I grew up with roaches. I had roaches all over the place growing up. I remember there were times that I wouldn't actually go to the kitchen because I knew that there were going to be roaches there after 10 o'clock. <laughs> that was their time and they took over. So especially with roaches, I guess this was a theological crisis for me. You know, why are there roaches in the world? Now the simple answer to that is that Allah made all of these animals as a form of risk for you, as a form of sustenance for you. And He made them a form of sustenance for each other. And He made the insects sustenance for them. Okay, so you find that when a bird is alive, and subhanAllah things change, circumstances change. When a bird is alive, it feasts on ants, it eats ants. When the bird dies, the ants eat the bird. Right, so these, these animals and these creatures are are, are, are sustenance for one another, their risk for one another, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it in perfect balance. And there are things that are even beyond our understanding. 
So when it comes to the roaches, you know, their most powerful role in the ecosystem, of course, is decomposing. And we don't really see that, but they pick up dirt. There would be a lot more dirt in the world without them. They eat rotten foods and they eat decaying material. And through their waste, it's put back into the soil and it's made beneficial and, and, and bacteria is cleared and so on and so forth. Meaning, subhanAllah, that even those things that to us are simple, you know, are nuisances, there is a purpose. They play a greater role in this balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Al-Mizan, you know, the, the way that He's made everything just and balanced in His creation. There is a role for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create a single insect, a single animal without purpose. And subhanAllah, we find that the animals uh, actually see things that we are incapable of seeing. And, and we spoke about this when we talked about the limitations of human beings and things of that sort. But you'll find, you know, the color spectrum even, that there are some animals that subhanAllah, it's not even the distance of sight. When they look at something, our color spectrum is far more limited than them, meaning they're able to see light and they're able to see different colors uh, that we wouldn't even know existed, even though they'd be looking at the same surface. And the reason why I bring that up is that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that they are able to see things of al ghaib of the unseen, that as human beings we're not able to see. And the Prophet ﷺ gives us something beneficial in that regard. He says وسلم, that when you hear the crowing of the rooster, فَاسْأَلُ اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَإِنَّهَا رَأَتْ مَلَكَ When you see the crowing of a rooster, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings because that rooster has seen an angel. And the Prophet ﷺ said when you hear the braying of a donkey, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for refuge because that donkey, فَإِنَّهُ رَأَ شَيْطَانٌ That donkey has seen a devil. So subhanAllah, these animals, even from their noises, there's a blessing for us. There's a, one of the times of accepted dua is the time when a rooster crows because the Prophet ﷺ says that it's seen an angel, it's seen a light source that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that we are incapable of seeing. Now, something else that we find uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us through these animals is that taking care of these animals, you know, can either be our ticket to paradise or it could be our ticket to hellfire. And this is something very powerful because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to us the woman that was actually a prostitute, uh, a zania, and she came across a dog that was thirsty and she felt compassion for that dog and so she took her shoe and she filled it with water and she gave water to that dog. And subhanAllah, I often ask myself, you know, if the Prophet ﷺ said that Jannah was given to that woman for the sake of that, that she was forgiven for her sins, and Jannah was given to her on the basis of that, what would most religious people do? They'd say, you know, if a dog came by, this is najas and that, you know, this is impure, they try to kick it out the way and so on and so forth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this woman Jannah for giving water to a dog. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave another woman hellfire because she imprisoned a cat, as the Prophet ﷺ said, not allowing the cat to fetch its own food or drink and not giving it any food or drink. And so these are sources of rahmah for us. They're sources of mercy. They could be our ticket to paradise. And as a believer, I should look at it in an optimistic sense. And I shouldn't think to myself at any moment that there are many human beings that are dying today. Why should I even be worried about the animals? Because the Prophet ﷺ was concerned about the birds. Even on the way back from a battle, Rasulullah ﷺ heard the complaint of a bird whose egg was taken from its nest. So the Prophet ﷺ actually stops the companions and shows compassion to those birds. So there's no point in life where we should stop caring about the animals, where it becomes an either or thing. Islam teaches us that you know the earth will testify for us or against us. What about the animals? And of course what that means is we should be even more kind and considerate towards human beings and things of that sort. Now uh, there are certain interesting facts that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned to us as well about taking care of certain animals and the effect that it has on our personalities. You know, scientifically taking care of certain breeds uh, you know, brings a sense of compassion, it nurtures compassion in a human being. Uh, cat owners tend to, to be more sensitive and compassionate and that's why you find Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you know, the sweet personality, maybe that had something to do with it, the way that he was with cats. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about uh, the different types of animal breeders and the personality traits that they might develop. So he said وسلم, that there will come a time when the best property of a man will actually be his sheep. And what he's talking about وسلم, is in the time of fitan, of great tribulation, that the, the safest person is the one who can take his sheep, just take some sheep with him and go to a place where he's free from all of the, that corruption and all of that tribulation. So it's actually a form of risk for him particularly, it's a form of sustenance for him particularly, in a time of fitna. 
And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, uh, that you tend to find pride and arrogance amongst, amongst the owners of, of horses and camels. <laughs> so he said those Bedouins that are busy with the camels and the horses, they don't have time for their deen, they don't have time for their religion. Well he said that humility and gentleness are the characteristics of Ahlul Ghanam, uh, the people that own sheep, the shepherds of sheep. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of course told us that all of the Prophets at one point in time were shepherds. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi his first career was as a shepherd. Now, the last thing that we take here, and I get asked this question all the time about animals is, can I have my pet in Jannah? Can I have animals in Jannah? Or is it that we just go to Jannah and there are no more animals? Because some people develop a great sense of attachment to animals. Now, obviously they are free from, you know, uh, from accountability, you know, eternal accountability, so they don't have Jannah and Nar, paradise and hellfire in that sense. However, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu, he narrates that a Bedouin came to the Messenger وسلم, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, I love horses. Will I get to have horses in Jannah? I love horses. Do I get horses in Jannah? And the Prophet وسلم, said, if you are admitted into Jannah, utita bi farasin min yaquta, you'll be given a horse of rubies. <laughs> and that horse would be brought to you with two wings and it will carry you wherever you want it to carry you. So yes, you can have animals in Jannah as well if you love them that much. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter us into Jannah to be able to have those animals. Allahumma ameen. Um, a very, very, very interesting video. Although it really doesn't speak that much about dinosaurs. So does the Quran actually say anything about dinosaurs or there's just something in the hadiths that may be related to animals existing before man. I'd love to get that clear. Um, this video talks about um, animals most of the times, you know. I thought Islam never allowed members to um, keep animals, like have pets or something. Or maybe is that only applicable to dogs, but cats are okay. And um, one thing I don't understand is where does it say that we're supposed to have pets, you know, be it in the Bible, be it in the Quran, be it anywhere in the world. And are animals not supposed to be free in the world, free to do whatever they want? You know, like a warthog, a warthog is free as compared to dogs because now those are domesticated, you know. Uh, cats as well are being domesticated. Is God okay with us domesticating things? You know, what, of course, we think, we reason, we do all those things, but then where's the command saying you have, you must have a pet, you must do this, you must do this. Taking care of animals is okay. Like when you walk to school right now, you find plenty of dogs, giving them food is not a problem. You find plenty of cats, giving them food is not a problem. I'm just not sure about humans domesticating animals, you know. I feel like they should just be free and be left to enjoy life and live life the way they want to, you know. Um, I really wish this was more about dinosaurs because that would really, really mean a lot to find out that, of course, dinosaurs existed. Of course, dinosaurs did exist. I mean, the skeletons are there. We see them being dug up every now and then, you know. So, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. If there's anything you have to say, let me know down below. If you want me to react to something, just give me the name or the link in the comment section below. And I'll be sure to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.